Hey there, Brewberries. What's up? And welcome to another episode of Bruin Build. Today, uh, we're back. And boy, howdy, am I feeling much better about playing this game than I did the past couple of weeks. Because last couple of weeks, we were working on the windmill. And you can see some changes have been made. Last week, uh, we made the windmill. And uh, I'm going to put this stuff on so I don't blow up and die. Um, I was struggling a lot with the design of it, eventually got around to actually making it, but then I still wasn't terribly happy with it. And thanks to y'all putting some stuff into the Discord, I think I've come up with a better idea. Now, I actually didn't actually, I didn't come up with it. The uh, incorporation of white glass is actually something that y'all came up with, and I think it looks really good. I think it was, that is like the the little little bit of detail that it was missing. And I'm very, very pleased with how it looks now, especially I've totally forgot that my white glass texture is like that. Now I am, I'm potentially thinking about changing the white glass texture back to a more vanilla style texture. Uh, I'm thinking about changing all of the glass paint, colored glass panes, and actually even this glass back to normal vanilla with just like maybe a little bit of a twist just to make it a little interesting so i don't know it's i feel like texture pack making there's some like double-edged swords you like lose instances of being able to use certain stuff if you do change the texture but then some that sometimes that texture is cool um but the windmill now is looking great i i still i just really enjoy i went and stripped the logs as well um and i think that looks so so much better it is just way way better i think and you can see as well i removed the there were two trees here there was one right there and then one big one right here and i just replaced the big one with a small one uh it, it was actually right here where this uh, rooted dirt was and i actually removed it and pushed it back a little bit and shoved it over to the right a little bit as well because it was blocking the view of the windmill from a few different angles especially like down there you couldn't really see it and i didn't want that so I went ahead and removed them and adjusted it and made it so the right side really wasn't a tree a, like a tree haven area uh, and just kept it so that the trees were around it and not blocking the view and i think that's a a much better thing than uh, what we had before but the interior is now entirely done so not only do the blades look much better now and this is also for any of you who are curious, if you've ever played Age of Empires, I believe it's two, but it could be a lot of the Age of Empires. I'm not really sure. This is based off of the Persian Empire's windmill. They had a vertical windmill with these like blades on the four different directions. And uh, that's what this is based off of. So it is actually there are windmill designs that are vertical axis based. Um, and this is what that one is based off of. And so that's where it comes from. Just if any of you are curious. Now, the interior is done, as I said. So if we go on in here, you can see we've got a beautiful little kitchen area. And this actually, you know, this bugged me for a moment. But then I kind of realized after looking at some different interior designs of various different um, places outside of the U.S., honestly, um, they don't always connect the walls with the ceiling. Like there's not always like a connection. Sometimes it's just an actual like barrier to not be able to walk through but it's not actually like a full sound barrier which i thought was interesting and so this actually is a little bit more accurate to some places that would maybe use this architecture style and so i thought well might as well keep it i think that's kind of cool um and so we've got just like a little kitchen area little living area and not a really anything too special then back here just a very very simple bedroom and nothing too particularly crazy in here i kept the interior design just very simple uh, because it is a small space and there's not really much need for anything crazy but this is where the crazy begins so made this archway right here to be an entrance to this big area and i thought i think it looks really really cool now so i made this whole mechanism of gears and stuff that would shift around and move and so we've got this concept here of this gear right here this is like the horizontal gear that connects up all the way to the top there it connects up to the actual axis that is rotating around so that gear would be rotating around like so and that would be rotating around and pushing this gear around and that would be pushing this around which would be raising and lowering this guy right here so we've got this little bucket system that goes down into the void of just darkness because this is uh the layering effect of glass that i was uh wanting to do and i think it looks really really cool so one side filled with water one side is empty going down to get water filled up and then it gets dumped 
out here. And so it's like it's being rotated and brought up and cycles all the way through, goes back through, and then goes back down and gets refilled. And so this is where all of the water from the sort of this well is coming from. And we don't really have to actually, you know, design an actual underwater cavern, under underground cavern with water. We could if we wanted, but I think this looks really cool as well as to just tell the story of what it what it's doing but they also show like hey this goes down pretty far uh, without having to do anything too crazy so if you're curious how to do this it's just black glass now our texture is entirely clear so there is no border but it works actually really well too with just connected glass textures if you have optifine and so all you do is you put a layer of black glass you skip a block leave that as air and then you do another layer of black glass and you just continue that all the way down so there's like four or five layers here then at the bottom, I have black concrete with a layer of um, tinted glass on top, oh, directly on top of the black concrete, just to lay, like totally pitch black it out. And that's what we have got going here. And I think it looks so cool. Like it's just like an abyss and you can just see stuff like disappear down. And you can't even tell really at the bottom there, these uh, stairs, I needed a shape down there, but I ran out of stairs. So I just put two stripped logs and you cannot even tell that those are stripped logs down there. And so that's kind of the nice thing too, is like once you get to a particular like darkness and depth of field away from you, you don't have to actually utilize the same materials if you want to be like showing something that's in the depths of something, but you don't have the materials that on hand. Like you can kind of play around with it and I think it's kind of cool. But now that that is done, we can say pretty much officially that this island is very close to being finalized. Of course, there's things like this that I need to clean up over time to wrap the island up entirely. And this is not gonna be difficult. I'm honestly not probably gonna even put a roof on this. Well, I may, I'm not really sure, but it's not gonna really be anything too crazy. But there's some things that we need to do around the island that I'm going to do just in between during these next couple of episodes that are not going to be I'm not going to touch on too much like the texturing of that or the finishing of the back wall of that building. Um, those don't need to be in videos, but they need to get done to be able to finish this. And same with this, like finishing the backside of this, putting a ceiling on it, etc. That's all stuff that I can do while we're doing other things. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do today. And today we're actually not working on this island. Uh, we may do a few things. Actually, we are going to do a couple things, but they're pretty. I think it's going to be pretty quick. I don't think it's going to be too much time. Basically, all I want to do is I want to go along the cliff sides here and do what we did on the other side. Ooh, it's gonna be dark. Let me go sleep and I'll show you the other side. So looking at this side, what you notice is there's a lot of dirt and grass and it just makes it feel like it's an actual cliffside instead of being a just stone face. Like it just adds, adds actually like realisticness to it. Um, and so that's what we're gonna be doing on the sides of this. Not gonna take too long. It's just putting dirt and grass and stuff. So that shouldn't take too much time. But there's also the dealio here where you may notice it that we need to actually connect this to the ground. And so we need to do that. Oh, good Lord. That guy, I, I, I kid you not, I almost peed myself. I was not expecting that. Oh my gosh, dude. You, you level 60 sneak or something like that was crazy. I did not even, did not make a noise. Oh man, that was scary. But you see here, this feels a lot less realistic uh, because it's just all stone. And so instead of doing texture variation, because our texture pack does have the different variation of stone, it really doesn't look that bad when it's all stone anyways. And so even with vanilla textures, it's not gonna look that bad. But we need to add some dirt and grass and stuff onto it. And we're gonna build a little bit of like a dinghy and stuff there, like a crash dinghy or something on that little beach. And so we need to do three sides worth of grass and dirt stuff. And so I'm going to do that. Um, and then we're also going to be working today on this island over here. Now, as we had said, we've said in the past, we're going to connect this island up with this island because originally we're going to say that they are two mountaintops that were once a part of the same kind of village or town. And so this was like the main bustling section, and then there were farmland in between, and then a monastery on top of this one, uh, this mountaintop area. But over time, 
because of the flooding of this area. This town has become much more trade centric and like has still been that main town portion, but now it leans more towards the aquatic farming system. And so down beneath is going to be farmland for the different like kelp, seagrass, coral, etc. that type of stuff. Their main farmland that used to be there is going to no longer be there and is going to be like transitioned into those type of farms. And so it's just gonna be like big fields of kelp and stuff. Um, and so then their dry farm is going to be actually here where their monastery used to be. And they're going to have the monastery still there, but it's going to be kind of taken over and becoming, it has become more of a farm area. And, uh, in order to start on this, what we need to do is actually build the island. And so the first things first is we need to knock down all of the sugarcane. All right, now that's all done. We get a much better view of the island itself. Uh, the next thing that I would like to do is flatten it entirely, which I will do in just a moment. But the plan for this now, animals, y'all are going to be so loud. I'm going to have to turn you down and post Oh, my goodness, you're so loud. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to tear all of this down. Everything's going to be torn down except for this tree because of the, the this thing, the bees nest. We will have to make sure that we save that. Uh, I think the bees are all dead, alas. But thankfully, we have all sorts of farm animals here i think we have two pigs and we have i think we have two pigs maybe oh there's a pig over there i forgot there's one pig on that island that spawned and there's one pig over here which we'll have to bring the other piggy over plenty of chickens as well and then of course our sheep are back here as well so this island is nice and set up for our farming area now as you can tell it's a little odd shaped uh, especially with the this area here this like kind of grassy area, not grassy, sandy area, flat beach area. So we're going to have to incorporate a little bit of interest in terms of the island design. But what we're not doing is what we did with that island's cliffs. Uh, that island, we made custom sized cliffs and extended out over the ocean. We're not going to be doing that today. We're going to be actually staying to this island's shape uh, and trying to stay true to it as best as we can. Uh, now, in areas like right here, I may actually utilize some of this edge area, but for the most part, I think I'm going to cut this off and not make it so square because it kind of feels strange. Now, this could be a good area landing area for like the buoy docks or the buoy uh, walkways. But for the most part, I don't want uh, this island to be uh, nearly as much of a pain as that one is to terraform. So we're going to be building up directly from the ground. So there's very like way less work to do and less planning, which I think will be good. Uh, and some of the sandy stuff I may actually like just kind of cut through here and leave this as like a beach that's down on, on the uh, shores. I think that would be good. Uh, and then the only custom area I actually may I may have just lied a little bit is uh, this area. I may connect this up just to make it a little rounder because I think it, it's overall a strange shape and I'm kind of wanting the monastery to be like in the center of it all and having that big chunk right there cut in is just feels really weird uh, so I may actually kind of round it out to connect up to like right around this section right here but that is not that big of a deal. I may even connect it up right here and just kind of like do a little slope here. And then one side with doing custom cliffs, not a big deal. Uh, I just didn't want to do it all the way around. That would be such a pain. So that is what we're going to be doing now. So the best way to do this that I can think of is probably a time lapse. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and get into it. And we're going to be building up the cliff sides, starting on the ground area here, and then figuring out how we want to shape this island. And then uh, we'll just kind of take it as we go. I think it's going to be good, though. I think it's going to be a fun one. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it. And let's go ahead and jump on in. I'm going to make this a quick time lapse. I'm thinking, you know, I... I, for one, I don't know about y'all. You'll have to let me know. Let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts are on this. I personally don't love really long time lapses. I get bored of them, and I honestly then start either clicking off of the video, looking at something else, looking at my phone or something. So I'm going to try and experiment around with keeping time lapses like this build to be roughly 30 seconds to a minute. I think that's about as long as I want it to be. 
Uh, we may have a couple of them in here, but I don't think it's uh, nearly as painful to watch if the time lapse is short and sweet and to the point. And so I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into a quick time lapse of building up this cliffside, the cliff sides of this island, and then we'll get on into the actual landscaping of it and we'll see how far we get. Alrighty, so I've been doing some building as you saw and we have an island now and it's looking good, I think. Obviously, it still needs some touch ups to make it feel even better, but I think it's so far it's a good start. Golly, there's some weird like screen jiggling going on. Oh, well. I'm thinking it's looking pretty good and it really didn't take that long to do actually uh, compared to uh, that island over there. That one took much longer to do, still not done. And this one is pretty much, I actually even connected up a lot of the, the ground here, the, the cliff that was going all the way down. There really actually wasn't as much as I thought there would be. Um, and yeah, I think it's looking good. So let's get on top of it and see what it's like on the actual top of the island. So I've got a, pl a pathway here at the top that this is kind of where I'm thinking people are going to be getting up to the island. Um, and so <clears throat> I'm trying to decide if I want to make like an actual pathway that kind of crawls up the cliffside. Or if I would like to make a pathway, a, like a um, sort of a dock area that is connected to this beach and extends out. And that's where the buoy system would actually connect up. And so there'd be like a stair system that gets up here as well and connects up to the pathway here. Trying to decide which one I want to do. And I'm honestly kind of leaning towards a little bit of both. Doing a little bit of that where we have a pathway that goes underwater. Uh, and then also doing that buoy system path where we have then like a, a dock with a connection point and some stairs and stuff to get up here. I'm I'm kind of considering doing both. I'm just not really sure where that pathway down would go. I'm thinking maybe here, like being able to connecting right there and we maybe make the pathway connect up on this side potentially to where it like kind of just like slowly comes on up and connects up to like right here or something like that that could probably fit pretty naturally i think that would actually be pretty good so that's probably what we'll do but i'm not too terribly sure i haven't really thought that much ahead about the actual like paths but that is okay i'm thinking we we're, we're pretty far ahead as to as, as to like what i wanted to get done uh this week so we're actually most anything else that we're doing today is going to be pretty much bonus because I really wasn't sure this uh, this week is turning out to be a little bit more hectic. I've got some uh, family medical things to attend to. Um, and so nothing with MRI or anything. It's just it's extended family. Um, so a little bit of that going on. So this episode may have to be kind of shortened, shortened to a little bit less than what I was originally thinking about getting done in the last clip. So we'll see, but let's explain what's going on here. So uh, I'm thinking that this is going to be, so this little a raised area with the stone around it, I'm gonna swap the stone out for like diorite or something. Um, and then this is going to be like a wheat field or something, a raised field. And then there we're gonna have kind of a pathway that goes up this way. And then this will just be grassland, maybe a, a bench or two on either side, just kind of like a, I want it all to feel connected, like you can explore around and feel like you're one with nature. Now, this is going to be the monastery itself. Did some planning as to how big the building I wanted to be and how sh the shape is going to go. So essentially, it, it looks a little strange now, um, but what I was kind of thinking is I wanted to have this sort of 
walk away so the second story goes over it but then i wanted you to be able to walk in and there'd be this like atrium in the center here and the atrium's not nearly as big as i was kind of thinking it would be so we may actually cause this hallway here to be a little be like a, a thin hallway rather than a a big old thick one um and I think that would be fine. I'm not really sure exactly what to do, but uh, I, I'm thinking I may extend this by two uh, and put this, but then it kind of makes the doorway here feel a little strange. I'm not really sure. That's the issue is that I'm running into is I'm not really sure what I want to do, but I will figure it out. Don't you worry. Uh, so that line is where the second story would be, which is basically going to be like living quarters is what I would imagine. And then you would be able to enter either there or on either side here. And it's just a U-shaped building. And uh, we'll be putting bookshelves and all sorts of stuff in here to make it feel kind of like a studying sanctuary type area. Uh, and then the atrium will be very much like green and lush and stuff. And I want it to feel very nice and connected with nature and all that jazz i am gonna probably for this build in particular um going to do that style again with the quartz pillars i think that looks really good it makes it feel a little bit more high-end than the the other type of builds where it's just mainly diorite but i am thinking that i'm going to use more diorite in the builds here to make it feel a little bit more like grungy if that makes sense like that that town is kept up a little bit better than over here. And this being the farming area is a little bit more downtrodden type feel. I think that makes sense. And so we're probably going to do similar to what we did with the windmill uh, where we had diorite, but we'll have just more of it crawling up. Then we've got the pathway will come around here. And then I'm thinking on either side here and here will be different crop fields. Uh, just smaller ones that aren't, aren't as big. This one's going to be definitely far bigger than, than, uh, that one. And the idea is that there's going to be like a wall that goes here and then goes around and connects up, but then it's pretty much just taking up most of this and like goes right up to the edge. And so it's like all going to be a different tile, like a, a crop up to the edge is basically what I'm meaning. Um, and so it's not going to be, there's not going to be walls surrounding it in its entirety because there's not really any need for it to be up to the edge. And you're probably wondering why is this raised and what is this going to be? Uh, so this is raised because one, adds a little bit of interest. And two, this is going to be a tiny baby version of the windmill. And I think that's going to be really fun. It's going to be a small little baby um, vertical windmill that I think is going to be really cutesy to build it's uh gonna be like an exact replica uh just in a much smaller format i think that's gonna be a fun challenge to figure out how to do and i think it's gonna fit and tie this area well uh to that one because that windmill is for water kind of pumping and that's what it, it's drawing water for their various needs for the bathhouse for the little pond area and all that but because they do have these different dry farming goods i figured they would need a windmill of sorts to be able to grind up wheat and stuff to make bread and all that so a small one given the the plantation here is much smaller uh is okay to build and i think it'll make this area feel a little bit nicer so that is the update for right now now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just build off camera as much as i can um, to give myself a little bit of freedom to be able to just go ham at it and, and try and get as much done as i can i need to gather resources as well so i need to go and get some diorite need to go get some calcite and etc et grass not grass well actually i do need grass um, and then I, I, I want to be given everything that's going on currently, uh, with the whole family stuff. Uh, I just want to be able to give myself a little bit of leeway in case I don't, I'm not able to get as much done. Um, I at least don't have to worry about making a time lapse or something. So that's what we're going to do. And, uh, we're going to just see where we get. And if we don't get super far, that's okay. Y'all have seen farms be made before, so I'll probably just work on it in between now and next episode and i think that is fine but let's go ahead get a little bit more work done see where we land and i'll see you guys in just a few all righty everyone i've been doing a lot of building and i'm quite pleased with how it's turned out but i definitely need a break and i think this is a good spot for us 
to well for me to show you what i've been doing so i i've just gone crazy in the building aspect and um i built the whole island uh every <laughs> everything's done uh well when i say done it is uh pretty much done it's not all done there's still some stuff that needs to be finished up but the majority of it is good. Now, first, what you're seeing is the staircase up. This is going to be where the beach that you kind of land at that you would uh, be taking the ice walking Frostwalker uh, bridge across. We're going to have a couple buoys systems that are like a buoy system that is like a guiding line, basically, with maybe like a chain to hold on to potentially. Uh, and then I may put like a buoy thingy right in the middle. That's like a small floating little building that's just like a rest stop. Because I would imagine that transporting yourself across the ocean in any facet is probably a bit arduous. Even if you just dingied over, you'd be a bit tired. Uh, and so I figured it'd be fun to make like a floating little house or something or other that's in uh, maybe more of that style to where it's just kind of like a floating thing. Um, I mean, it's not going to be big, not going to be anything crazy, just going to be purely like just like a rest stop raft. And I think that would be kind of fun. So we're going to do that probably next episode, uh, along with some of the underwater stuff. But let's look at this. So this is I don't have the entrance, the roadway up the island i'm thinking that's going to go like right here and enter up like connect up right there maybe uh not really sure but i may went ahead and made this since i know we're going to need access from the beach and so we come on up here and bada bing bada boom we've got trees we've got a wall and it's just glorious and you may be wondering what is this wall what type of crop field did you make well actually nothing's in here this is going to be, I'm going to put uh, a couple troughs on the side, and this is going to be where our cows are. And I may make a small little building. I may put the troughs over here. I don't know. I, I'm thinking about, or maybe since this has no tree, maybe we put like a tiny little overarching thingy that uh, the troughs and maybe some hay and stuff can be here. And we'll just have a few cows that we can breed up and eat uh, normally, you know, because uh, I'm entirely out of food. Uh, and so it would be nice to have a source of food that we can do. So I'm going to enchant up a sword and get fire aspect and looting three on that so that we can have a glorious cow farm that we can come to and breed up and have some food. And I think that'll be good. But the pathway will come along this way. All these red flowers will be removed. Uh, I just bone mealed real quickly to give an idea as to like what this is going to be. I'm trying to think if I want another tree over here somewhere. I tried growing one and it grew wacky, so I tore it down. We'll take a look, see at that in a moment. Uh, so this is, if I can get far enough away, this is the monastery. And uh, you may also, you're probably hearing, I'm gonna try and turn it down in post, but there's a lot of enemies below us. I did not light up underneath the island. Oh, and we're also missing one piece of quartz. Very good, that's okay. Um, so this is the monastery. This is what it is like. And I'm very, very pleased with this. We'll take a spectator view at the very end of everything to see kind of the roof and all that. But I'm really happy with this build. I think it looks really good. So it's kind of like using that frontal aspect with the, the quartz like we did on those buildings over there. But then I added in my own little flair to this side of the this uh, town and decided to build up the walls as if maybe they're maybe a little crumbly um, and they're not as uh, well put together. That's why there's more diorite involved in this build. Uh, and so I think that that's kind of not what in the... Are you here to learn or are you here to work? I hope you're here to work. We'll deal with him later. But that's why the walls I decided to build up. I think it adds like it was feeling really flat, uh, especially since I don't have any windows on the sides here and I don't really want any windows. Um, I decided to build up the bottom and let it so the flatness doesn't feel as crazy. And I think it's so far it looks good. I also really like the front aspect here where you have like a little Juliet deck uh, with like a central pillar kind of separating doorway. And I think that's kind of nice. Nothing so far on the inside. So we've got two entrances here. And then this is like the atrium area that I was envisioning. I think it looks really nice. It's very simple, very simplistic, nothing too crazy. I am going to eventually put something here to be symbolic of a shrine of some sort. 
uh, because I figure that this is like the main aspect that they did not adjust. Most of this is going to be adjusted. This whole island probably used to be devoted to this type of thing, but over time has been devoted now to crops and stuff, as you can see. And so this is what I wanted to, I wanted them to still keep the aspect of the building, like the whole monastery aspect and keep the shrine involved. But the rest of the building is going to be utilized in other facets. So we have an L-shaped building that is just very simplistic. We've got a doorway out here. Oh my gosh, Llama, you scared me. Uh, doorway out, going to make a little backyard area, nothing too crazy. And the insides I haven't done because I want to do a lot of bookshelves on the lower floor. And then upstairs is just going to be a sort of bunk house, basically, is what it's going to be turned into. Um, because that's what I kind of would envision would be happening up here. It's just a bunch of bedrooms and stuff and uh, sleeping quarters. Similar to if you uh, play Skyrim, the uh, Greybeards have just like their own kind of beds and bunk room areas and that's kind of what i'm envisioning is it's not anything spectacular no separate bedrooms or anything like that just shared bed space and i think that's okay so if we come along this way then we start getting into the actual crop fields themselves this is what the side of this one looks like and then we've got different little crop fields here we've got carrots here melons and you can connect up to the backyard over there uh, melons growing over here. I haven't quite finished the uh, roadway itself, but I'm starting to get a little bit uh, screen sick of playing Minecraft. So uh, that's why we are finishing this up now, and I will be doing uh, the other things later on to really flesh this island out. But for the most part, it's all done. Uh, we got a wheat field here, and uh, my potatoes have a texture issue, so don't mind the purple and black squares. I'll get that fixed. I think I accidentally put in an old file and it's uh, not properly named or something like that. A little beetroot farm. Nobody likes beetroot, so we'll just move on from that. And then this guy, this is the windmill. And uh, it's not fully done because I ran out of quartz. And so that's what the stone is. The stone will all be quartz similar to this kind of feeling right here. And the basic principle of it is similar to what we did over on the other windmill. If we can get that into render view, don't know if we will. So that one is totally square. And I wanted to do something similar in terms of the build style, but with the glass and the diorite walls and stuff. But I decided to go a little different with this and go kind of triangular shaped. And I actually think it's kind of cool. Um, it's it's obviously it's much smaller and it's not necessarily anything crazy, but I think it's actually kind of a cool build. It's almost futuristic in a weird sense. I didn't really mean for it to be, but I kind of like the shape of it. I think it looks pretty darn cool. Uh, and so this uh, build is also very diorite -y, crumbly on the bottom, and then it'll have the quartz on top. Uh, and then I'll be putting these things here, the stair wall fence and then a lantern on all the sides as well, just to make it so it's lit up decently. I was debating on if I wanted to put them there or if I wanted to put them one lower, and I think I'm going to do the one lower. And then on the inside, nothing so far, but we will have just like a circular grindstone for wheat. That's going to be like the primary purpose of this windmill is for these crops, grinding them up and making paste and making like flour and all that stuff. But I'm I'm quite pleased with how this build has turned out, and I think we should look at it in shaders. Spectator mode initiated. Let's take a look see at this. Oh yes, I think this is uh, very good. Ooh, I'm a fan. I this island was not nearly as difficult to build as that one because it's much smaller, and this is exactly what I was envisioning. I think it looks so good. Ah. Oh. I am so pleased. Once we finish everything out and get all the, I'm going to put some dirt and stuff along the cliff sides and make it just feel a little bit more natural. And then I think it'll be so, so good. That backyard area will be all finished and it'll just be a nice, complete monastery. And, uh, we'll bring the cows up to the cow field, get some texture variation on the grass as well, put some moss and stuff around. I think, oh, it's going to feel so good. Yes. And this is what I did for the roof here. It's pretty much just like a dome roof, but it's very small. So I just used some uh, nether wart, warped nether wart, and then used a little bit of warped wood, and uh, it's looking good. So we've got like a nice atrium area. And, oh, I am so pleased. 
So that is the view from our dock area. You can actually, in shaders, without the fog and stuff applied, you can actually see it. And I'm so pleased. Like, you can actually see the Monasterian farm. So you can actually, this makes me feel so much better because I was afraid that it wasn't going to look like what I wanted, but this is exactly what I was envisioning. Like, imagine this without the water and you had like a town portion or crop field portion down below, you would feel much more connected. Oh, it's so good. I'm just, I'm so, so pleased with how this has turned out. I love it. And then what's the view from over here? Oh yeah, that is good. I mean, if we up the render distance, oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that a cool shot? I love it. I am so happy that I went ahead and just did this. Hopefully you guys can understand doing this, but I think it's turned out wonderfully. Obviously, the windmill needs a little bit of love with the quartz and stuff, but we'll get that done. Uh, I'm so pleased. I think it 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 looks great. I love the island. I think it's I it's turned out so so well and I am I'm so thrilled about it. I absolutely love it. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, leave a like in real life and look forward to next episode because we're getting so close to being done and I'm so thrilled. And I'm just going to keep on working a little bit, fleshing out this island, building out the rest of the, the other portions of the island that need a little work on the mainland. And, oh, guys, 118 is right around the corner and I am itching. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, leave a like in real life. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Brune Build. Uh, bye bye.